It's Jesse from Mullen Woodworks. We're going to go over today how to build this knotty alder farm style entryway table. If you're just getting into woodworking, this is going to be a really cool project that you can do. Um, it's fairly simple and you can change the dimensions to fit your exact needs. So let's get to it. Gearheart Industries is a sponsor of this video. If you're a woodworker like me, then you need to mark every single piece you make. Whether it's your name or whether it's a logo, make sure that you go over to www.gearheartindustries.com or follow them on Instagram to get the best branding irons out there. Now I knew for this project I was going to use alder for the entire base and I was planning on using a barnwood top, but we decided to go with an alder top as well. I started by milling out the legs. Um, they needed to be two inches thick and all I had was four quarter. Um, so I decided to glue up two pieces of four quarter to get the right thickness I wanted for the legs. And once the legs were glued up, I went through and used my hand plane to plane down one side, checked if it was square and then ran that through my table saw to get the right dimensions. Since I'm using rough lumber, I used my joiner jig to get all the pieces straight on one side and then I run them through my table saw and get them exactly square in the right dimensions I need. Now, since I don't trust my compound miter saw to be exact, I took my crosscut sled and I made sure I cut the ends off on every piece to get them completely square and that way I wouldn't have any trouble coming forward. After that I used my Craig Jig Foreman and cut all the pocket holes in every piece. I went through and sanded all the pieces down and then I just started to assemble. I used this armor tool workbench um, just to make sure everything stays in place and doesn't shift while screwing in all the pocket holes. It worked really well and everything ended up being perfectly square right where I wanted them. So I need the sides to be two inches thick because I'll be adding some accents. So I glued them, clamped them, and then shot them in with some brad nails. I ripped down some pieces for the shelving to sit on. This way the shelving is going to be flush with the front rails. I added some pieces on the top just to add some more stability to the whole piece. After the base was mostly assembled we started working on the top. I used 8 quarter inch alder which was really nice. It gave it a really cool look because it's thicker than the normal Two by fours or anything like that, it gave it a really beefy look to the top. I used my biscuit joiner and since it was so thick I actually doubled up on all the biscuits that I usually do. It worked really well, it kept everything really aligned and I hardly had to do any sanding. So I used epoxy to fill in all the knots and then just sanded it down. I put a chamfer on the bottom edge just to give it a more unique look. Of course I used Gearheart Industries branding iron to mark my piece and then I used Armor Seal to finish it off. It took about five coats and it finished up great. So I cut the slots for the Z clips using my biscuit joiner and then I started staining the entire base. After the stain dried, I went through and I sanded down the entire base, uh, the shelving and the base itself. I wanted the wood grain to pop through more than it was. The stain was covering up a lot of the character that the alder um, had underneath. After sanding, I used this Verathane floor finish. It's a polyurethane water-based. Uh, finish. I really like how it works. It's really tough and it can take some abuse. I feel like it works better than the normal polyacrylic or any other polyurethane that I've used. Next is to attach the base to the top. I use these Z clips. These Z clips allow movement of the wood um, over time without affecting the piece. Now to finish this project up I need to put in the shelves 
and the accents on the end. I used an 18 gauge brad nailer with one and a half inch uh, brad nails and it worked great for the length and kept everything securely in place. Obviously on the end if you want to do X beams for your accents or you could do something like I did, give it a little bit more character, you can choose whatever you want. That's what's great about this piece. So you can design it exactly the way you want with the dimensions you want to fit your specific needs. Now this was a really fun project. I hope that this video gave you a basic overview of what you would need to do to tackle a project similar to this one. Obviously you can use 2x4s or dug fur instead of hardwood like I used, but you can use that same process to tackle something similar to this. If you like this video make sure you subscribe i have a lot of upcoming projects and let me know what you thought in the comments thanks